As we await multiple Supreme Court rulings on both Donald Trump's future, both as presidential candidate and a free man, and also the, the future of American democracy, <laughs> the court finds itself mired in a serious legitimacy crisis. Its conservative members are in almost seemingly endless and shocking succession of ethical stand scandals, something we have covered extensively on this show, particularly when it comes to the most egregious offender, Clarence Thomas. While there have been other controversies, particularly around conservative justice Samuel Alito, Thomas seems to be in a category of his own. He has spent decades on the receiving end of the sustained and often undisclosed largesse of a number of right-wing billionaire benefactors who have crafted for him a life of high luxury on the salary of a Supreme Court justice. Thomas and his wife have received free vacations on yachts and travel on private jets. His high-end RV was essentially purchased for him. The man he raised as his son had his private school tuition paid for as a student. His mother lives rent-free, all thanks to handouts from the conservative movement. We should note that Supreme Court justices make well over the national median income, currently a little over $285,000 a year. They're not, you know, going poor. But they do not make what we on the show like to call third boat money, let alone tropical vacation on our private luxury yacht money. So when these stories first started breaking from ProPublica, it seemed that rich conservatives were trying to placate Thomas into staying on the court and locking in their right-wing majority by supplementing his income with the trappings of extraordinary wealth, with the added benefit that, hey, if you ever have actual business before the court in some facet or another, it can't hurt to own the house of one of the justices' moms. Now, it's a well-documented fact that Clarence Thomas was born into a poor family. He did not marry into wealth and, in fact, spent much of his life deeply in debt. He had a desire to live at a level beyond his government salary means. So it, it really looked from afar, as I read all this reporting and we followed you here on the show, like essentially some kind of arrangement, I would have guessed implicit or tacit, had been worked out through these billionaire benefactors. Thomas could stay on the court instead of jumping ship to a fancy corporate law firm for big payday and still live a life of enormous luxury with private vacations and a fancy RV that he loves to drive around the country and cosplay as an average Joe. You find oh, yeah. It's away from the sort of the meanness that you see in, in Washington that you get here with just the regular folks, and it's so pleasant. <laughs> oh, the regular folks in my incredibly <laughs> luxe, uh, uh, expensive RV. Now, uh, all this stuff put together for Thomas is it, it, almost like a benefits package. The, the man could functionally operate with two sources of income and two sets of institutions he works for. The United States government that pays him his official salary, the people of the United States, and then the right-wing movement that subsidizes the rest of his life. And now we finally have evidence that not only is this theory true and this arrangement is what it appeared to be, but that Thomas came about as close as you could possibly come to explicitly asking for it hat in hand. According to a new report in ProPublica back in 2000, Thomas started loudly complaining about his financial situation. He was making about $174,000 a year, which is equal to about $300,000 in today's money. But he was, as we said, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. When Thomas found himself s sitting next to a then Republican member of Congress on a flight, he reportedly told him that if the justices did not get a pay raise, quote, one or more justices will leave soon. Not a very subtle message, I got to say. It, like, it sounds a lot like, give me more money or I'm going to quit. And remember, this is 2000, okay? Bill Clinton was in the White House. Republicans controlled the Senate, but there was a real risk if Thomas retired, his seat would go to a liberal. And Thomas is also the, the sort of intellectual core of the right wing of the court. And it sure seems like that message was received loud and clear. That threat from Thomas was written up uh, in a memo for then Chief Justice William Wenquist. And while Thomas did not receive the significant pay raise he wanted from Congress, the message got out to conservative movement who made sure he was taken care of. As ProPublica reports, quote, during his second decade in the court, Thomas's financial situation appears to have markedly improved. Thomas received dozens of expensive gifts throughout the 2000s, sometimes coming from people he'd met only shortly before. What followed was years of largesse from rich and well-connected conservatives, the second set of income. And by 2019, Thomas no longer sounded like the guy complaining to anyone who would listen that he was not happy with his salary. Right now, what is the compensation of a justice of the Supreme Court? Oh, goodness, I think it's plenty. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
this is fine. I have no, my wife and I are doing fine. We don't, we don't live extravagantly, but we are fine. So here we are, nearly a quarter of a century after Thomas essentially threatened to quit. He's become one of the most consequential right-wing justices of his era, who has built a national conservative judicial movement that adheres to his ideological philosophy and that of his billionaire benefactors. And he is one of nine who will decide if the man who attempted the coup will get a bailout or if he will be brought to justice.